I got to go. So Rory, how are you uh, enjoying Belfast so far? Uh, it's uh, day one, so so far so good. Basically, just walked around, had a coffee. Haven't really had much chance to see the city, but so far so good. Do you have uh, been warmly by the fans here? So yeah. Great, uh, great yeah, no, there's a lot of people out there. Warm reception, want to take photos. People, uh, they have a high energy here at fights, so it's cool. Have you been out to the arena yet? What do you make? There's a lot of people that are seeing tonight. Yeah, no, I, I was just out there for the last fight and people were pumped. It was some good energy for sure. So let's talk about this fight with Paul Daly then. When, when was this first kind of offered to you? What was the kind of uh, procedure you went through? Did you have to think about it that much? Uh, it was probably about three weeks ago. And uh, it took about a week to, you know, to kind of decide because it was earlier than I expected to come back. I was hoping to come back in, like, say, July. But, uh, uh, you know, seeing how I was feeling uh, when when the when uh, the question was asked for the fight, um, I was feeling really good as far as my healing goes with my nose. So I uh, I felt confident with it. So I took the fight. And how was that nose sound like? Obviously, it was breaking. You were saying quite a few times in training after yeah. after the last fight, especially with like Stephen Thompson. How's yeah. that now? Is, is that how would, how much would you say it is as a percentage out of 100? Right? Yeah, I would say it's uh, it's 100. percent You know, I really gave it the time it needed to heal, like any bone would. You know, I don't have any breathing problems. It's uh, it was just a matter of time for the bone to actually heal. And uh, this year, I gave it that time. The year before, I didn't. No, the fight's going to be in May. Is that earlier than you thought? Uh, you know, it would be to get your return and, and your first fight better talk? Yeah, yeah. Like I was saying, it took me uh, about a week to, to, you know, to sit on it and think, you know, is is this really what I want to do? Because I was planning a, a a later return to fighting, but you know, I'm I'm feeling good and I'm ready to go. What about Paul? Is he a guy that you ever thought you would get in an engagement? Yeah, absolutely. I've been watching Paul for many years now, and you know, same weight class kind of thing. So I figured definitely we'd be meeting sooner or later. And is it this one? You could be looking for the title after this. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this is a title contender fight. Have you enjoyed the layoff, Rory, or are you itching to get back in there? It's been quite a long layoff. Yeah, I've been pretty miserable with it, to be honest. Uh, it was a hard, it was a hard couple of years actually, because uh, I had taken some time off uh, after the Lawler fight, and uh, you know I damaged it in training. I took a fight, you know, trying to get back in there, and uh, got hurt again. So you know, this year I had to take actual time off even from training so it was a bit miserable for me it, this is a huge fight for you after of course the loss against robbie and then again stephen thompson two of the best welterweight coc has to offer you're now coming into the fight paul daly who a lot of people would consider the most dangerous welterweight that bellator have was that even a consideration for you or did you want to straight away take on the best when you were fit and ready to do something yeah you know, my plan here in bellator is to fight the very best uh, and I told Bellator, you know, any weight class, you know, it really doesn't matter to me. Obviously, right now, I'm, I'm gunning for the welterweight title, uh, possibly the middleweight title. And after that, it's really about the biggest names and the most exciting fights. Do you feel any pressure um, coming into it, Rory, with the, the free agent market? Is, it's all talked about, fighters are moving, but you are probably the biggest name to test the free market and move to Bellator. Does that add more pressure, do you feel, coming into this fight? Uh, not for me. I mean... Uh, that was just a financial situ uh, decision on my part, you know. It's up to other fighters, you know, if they're happy with what they're fighting for, and go ahead and re-sign with whatever they got. But, um, you know, I, I uh, for me, I, I believe in uh, fighting for what I'm worth, you know. And, and when it comes to contract negotiation, I was willing to, uh, to go and do a battle for it, and it worked out in my favor. And, uh, and also, I'd like to add that I'm really happy with where Bellator is going, you know. They, uh, they're, they're here building a, a strong roster. You know, they're not, uh, they're not just uh, some, some sparkle uh, that's going to just uh, flicker away like a lot of other MMA shows. They got, a good, they got a good team of guys like Scott Coker and Rich, and they know how to make a good successful show. Um, Scott Coker, when he was in Dublin last, said that the uh, welterweight division, he considers Bellator have the best welterweight division. Would you echo them words? Um, I wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's com we're competing, we're getting up there, but I, I still believe UFC's got the deepest, the deepest roster. I think there's still a lot of work to be done for Bellator, 
but uh, I think uh, I think uh, me moving over I think is uh, there's going to be some guys from UFC looking at that and uh, seeing how happy I am over here and uh, I think they're going to they're going to see uh, that they want to make the transition too or at least test their free agency to see if they can get what they're worth and uh, I, I see Bellator coming out on top on that How big was the UFC Reebok deal and your decision to come to Bellator or was it purely that the UFC weren't offering you a deal on the contract that you thought you were worth yeah, I mean, the biggest thing was Bellator stepped up and and, and uh, they gave me a great offer and uh, you know I, I think that's that's what really resonated with me on this obviously there's a few other things like the sponsorships and things like that but and also the opportunities Bellator Bellator is willing to give me they want to put me in the big fights they want to market me and put me into these these uh, these fights that are going to be exciting for the fans UFC, you know, they've got tons of other guys that they've got to manage and, you know, sometimes they could forget about uh, other talents and, and forget about guys. And maybe I, and I was thinking maybe I was going to be uh, one of those guys that was going to fall off their radar, you know. Your long-time teammate, George St. Pierre, is making a comeback. Would that be really something that you would have discussed with George? Because it seemed to be in negotiation, was holding up his return. Did you have a word with him and say, Bellator? Uh, I didn't have any part of that. Uh, we we have the same management team, so I'm sure they did, but uh, no, I didn't have anything to do with that. The London crowd can sometimes attract some more lighter uh, MMA consumers. What what can you, you know, a bit more casual fans may turn up to the fight in London. Okay. What what type of fight and what type of uh, performance can they expect from you? Uh, they can expect me to move forward in this fight. You know, I'm going to be hunting him down. Like I was saying at the press conference earlier this week in London, is I'm going to be coming forward every time he takes a step back, every time he wants to take a breath. I'm going to be in there in his face, pressing him, not giving him a chance to breathe until he feels like he's drowning, and he's going to have to give up. Are you at all worried about Paul's power? Because Michael Van Page, when he was here earlier, said that. Uh, Semtex has rockets in both hands or do you think that you have both the striking and the grappling advantage over him and you can neutralize his threat? Uh, I mean I'd be stupid enough to say that he doesn't have power I mean look at the guys fights but I mean I fought I fought some of the the hardest hitters in the, the division and uh, I don't think uh, my power is uh, anything to to blink on either you know so we'll see what happens but uh, you know he's definitely got some some hard punches and kicks and get some amazing striking those are his his assets but uh, i just feel that i have a wider range of abilities and i'll be able to neutralize that one thing paul did say when he was here with us was yeah he's watched your fights but you don't have that knockout power so what do you think of that what, what would your reply to that comment be i got quite a few knockouts so i just think it's just factually wrong <laughs> Like, is, is there a way that you think this fight is going to go or do you think it's going to go the distance do you think you'll finish Paul? I'm looking to finish him I'm looking for a dominant fight you know I want to push this fight and, you know I want to make him bleed and hurt him I'm not looking to put pressure on myself more let the pressure off. Uh, I think you've seen in my last fight there, uh, it was a pretty pretty hesitant fight, trying to be something I wasn't, trying to match skills to a guy that was not my style. So I think just taking that pressure off and being free out there, uh, being myself, um, fighting my fight, I think it's just gonna go that way. And uh, I'm a finisher at heart, so I think it'll just come out that way. Is there any reason you approached that one boy quite differently? Was it just game planning or was it any reason? It was, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, I had I had a good attitude, but I think it was just a, a, you know, one little idea turned into the whole the whole camp just going in that, that direction with worrying about his his skills, you know, just one little you know seed of doubt kind of clouded the whole training camp and me working on just what Stephen does, you know, rather than just doing my thing and what I'm used to training for so you know it turned out to be a really terrible fight for me but in the end I I sat down and I was honest with myself what did I do wrong here and how can I not do that and be in that situation ever again
GSP said you were destined to be a world champion. When do you think we'd see that come true? Uh, any day now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Thank you very much.